Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Dani and today I want to talk about the books that I read in May and June. I didn't do a wrap up at the end of May because I read two books in May and in June I also read two books. So I have only four books to talk about for the past two months, which is fine, it happens. I've been on a bit of a slump, I guess, uh, with reading, but I have some amazing books to talk about. One of my new favorite authors and books that I've read in my life, possibly, but also some, all, all of the others are really good or great. So I'm going to leave the best for last, of course, and I'm going to start with a book that I've been talking about reading for so long, since the beginning of the year, and I finally finished it in May, and it was A Tyranny of Faith by Richard Swan. This is the second book in the Empire of the Wolf trilogy. The first one is, I already forgot, The Justice of Kings, and this is a new fantasy that I've been really enjoying. It hasn't been my favorite, one of my favorites so far, and I'll explain why, but this has been a really amazing read and so well written. This series is about a man called Conrad, Sir Conrad von Wald. Uh, he is the justice of the emperor. So what that means is that he goes around the empire uh, and looks at if everyone is doing what they're supposed to do, if they're following the rules and all that. He has the power to be the detective if anything's going wrong, the executioner if someone should be executed, uh, and also just the judge to decide if all of that needs to happen or not. So in the first book, we start very calmly. They're walking. Uh, he is with his uh, crew of people. I don't know how to put it, uh, which is Helena and I forgot the other names, but there are two other guys with them. And they go to this uh, town, a village, that some that a woman was murdered. So they started to investigate that and decide what happens. And of course, it's much bigger than they thought. There were, there's a lot of pieces involved in that. And there's a lot of going on in the capital that they don't know about because they've been out for a long time. And in this book, they kind of go back to the capital and see a lot of the repercussions of a lot of the things that they've been seeing happening around. They they see what's been, what happened because of all that, or some of it. And the story is told uh, in first person through the perspective of Helena, which is her protege. He wants her to be the new justice. He, she doesn't know exactly what she wants. Uh, she's a young woman, a 19-year-old uh, woman that has had a lot of really brutal, uh, awful things happen in her life, in her childhood. So she has a lot of unresolved issues. <laughs> And we see a lot of that, and I think she is an amazing uh, narrator for the, for the story overall. Uh, and she's telling the story as an older woman, so sometimes she will interject as an older woman and say, oh, I don't know why I was thinking that at the time. Oh, that was my youth talking or something like that. So I really like, like those parts because it reminds us that she's actually older now and she survived whatever happen uh, in this trilogy. We know that she survives, but we don't know about anyone else. So there are a lot of really big stakes here. And one thing that I saw uh, when I was researching this book online is that this guy, that this author, uh, is actually uh, an attorney or was an attorney. So it really makes sense. A lot of the discussions that they have here about law, about justice, about what's moral and what's ethical and what's fair, uh, what is actually, is are we being just... Uh, being the doing the kind of the right justice, you know what I mean. Uh, so there's a lot of those discussions which are really amazing and so well done and so well written that I really love. So most of this book I am captivated and immersed in the story because the writing is really good and those discussions are amazing. He's a really good author to write dialogue. I really love when just there are people talking and discussing. One thing he's really not good at, and of course that's only my opinion. All of this is only my opinion. Uh, that's why you're here, for my opinion, right? One thing he's really not good at is uh, writing romance uh, and at writing the way that the woman is feeling when she's in love or when she's thinking about men or like whatever is going on in the romance aspect of this book. I really hate it. So that's why those books are not five stars for me. I just, when she starts to talk about anything related to romance and the stories, I'm like, why are you doing that? Not only it's un completely unnecessary for this story, although he kind of tries to make it more of a thing here in this book, and I still think we could have done without it, but also 
it just not does not feel real, you know? So those are the parts that kind of take me out of the story and I really don't care for, but everything else in this book is amazing. In the first book, there were some really like questionable things in the romance part, uh, but then here, it's still kind of questionable if you think about it. But anyway, I put that aside because everything else in this book is so good and so well written that I don't ever want it to cloud my judgment of everything else. But I will say, not my, by far not my favorite uh, romance uh, in fantasy. And it's very, very minor. There are like two chapters in each book that has something related to it. Uh, so it's not, that. like I said, it's unnecessary. We don't need that uh, for the story to still work. And even the romantic things that kind of impact the story in some way could have been just platonic uh, friendship and caring and love between the characters that are not romantic. Uh, but yeah, so that's my negative about this series so far. I hope, I hope we don't go where we're, where I think we're going in the third book with that, but everything else is so good. So I would for sure still recommend it. And if you can get past those parts, if that don't, they don't bother you, or if you just, uh, like me, you just see how minor they are for the story, then I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you like uh, f fantasy in medieval scenarios that are not too high fantasy. It's very low on fantasy, but this one we have more than the, than the first one, but there's still a lot of conversations around the magic system here that I really enjoy, especially in this second one. And then the other book that I read in May was actually a novella, and it was A Prelude to Ashes by Chago Abdallah. And this was really good. So this is a prequel to A Touch of Light, or the series, uh, what's the name? The Ashes of Everin, a series which I really do want to read so much, but I got this the, the novella by subscribing to his newsletter. He sends it uh, for free. And I, I was like, oh, I'm just going to start. If it's a prequel, I'm just going to start with that. And I've heard people saying that you could start with that, uh, including him. Uh, so I decided to do that because I tried. I bought the ebook for A Touch of Light and I tried to start it. <laughs> In the beginning of the book, there's this big list of characters and factions and like all the ways that people are connected. And it got me really overwhelmed. Because when this story actually starts, I, I glanced through all the things, trying to understand what things meant. Uh, and when I actually got to the actual story, I was already so overwhelmed and trying to make connections of the characters that were starting to be introduced that I was just lost. And I just couldn't get into the story. And I decided at that point that I didn't want to read the ebook. I want to read the physical book because I'll be able to go back and forth and like tap things to remember, uh, to, to remind myself of things that I want to know later. But then I went to read the prequel, which was a prelude to ashes. So the story starts when this one of the princes of this kingdom uh, is waiting for uh, for some people from the enemy kingdom to come because they want to talk uh, peace and truce and all of that. And he's being seen the the girl, the princess of the other kingdom. I might be saying some of this wrong, but that the overall premise is that. So they are together and they want their kingdoms to be in peace because they want to be together. Uh, but at the beginning of the story, they're waiting for that and the woman doesn't appear. She doesn't show up. That's just like one very small part of the story. Uh, but we go into the bigger war and there are a lot of different regions that are not uh, in peace and they want materials and stuff the other kingdoms have. I'm not going to say much because it's a novella, so just go into it knowing that it's a high epic fantasy about all these different political factions trying to destroy each other or at some points betray each other and some points get allied, get allies with each other. So there's a lot going on and it's very complex, but I think he did a very great job at narrowing down uh, in this novella so we could really understand these characters that were being uh, shown here. And from what I understand, the characters in this world live like over a hundred years and the, the, the Touch of Light, the actual first book, it's still with the same characters in the prequel, even if it's a hundred years later. So I'm really curious to see how that's going to evolve for the actual series. So it was really good. And the best part of the series, of this whole thing, is that they're griffins, which are a very underrated magical creature, in my opinion. I, I saw there was another book coming out around now, <laughs> this year, that had griffins. 
but I don't remember which one it is. But this is the first one that I've seen that I've read, I think. And that was that was really a lot of fun. So I can't wait to get more Griffins and the first book of the series, but also the second book has a big Griffin on the cover, which was very exciting. So I'm just really hyped to continue and just to continue this universe and start the actual series. And I would definitely recommend it. This is also a self-published fantasy. I forgot to say that. Uh, but this is also self-published fantasy. And he, in A Touch of Light, her first book, was a participant for Spiffbo last year. But I'll talk more about Spiffbo after this book. But either way, I really recommend it. I had a lot of fun and I will definitely continue it. So that's it for me. Let's go into June. And the first book that I want to talk about is Fortress of the Lost Amulet by Michael Webb. I said I was going to talk more about Spiffbo in the second part. So here it is. This is a book that is a participant on Spiffbo 9. Uh, this is a competition for self-published fantasy authors. The acronym is SPFBO, uh, self-published SP uh, fantasy blog off. So it's a competition uh, that involves 10 bloggers or booktubers or people who are in the reviewing book industry and 300 authors that submit their books to participate in this competition. And if I had the time, I would want to read all 300 because I started to look into this competition this year earlier, the beginning of the year, and it's just so much fun and there's everyone is so passionate about it that I can't help but be in in the hype and just want to read all of them. So when the 300 books were announced, I looked at what was available on script as an audiobook and this was one of them and I really love this cover so I just started listening to it without very big expectations. It was just one that was available and sounded interesting. If you want to know more about Spiffbo, I'm going to leave the link for Mark Lawrence's blog. He's, organized, he's the organizer for this whole thing uh, in the description, but I would also highly recommend you check out the, the channels of Bookborn and Covers with Cassidy because they are both official judges for the competition. So they're doing a lot of content around it and it's just a lot of fun. It's so, oh, it's so exciting. I can't wait to see what the finalists are going to be. I'm definitely going to try. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try to read uh, all the finalists when they're eventually announced uh, at the end of the year, beginning of next year or so. And I'm very excited for that. But let's talk about Fortress of the Lost Amulet. This is a YA fantasy about this group of kids who are looking for a lost amulet. Uh, there are a lot of political, not political, but there are a lot of political figures that are also looking for the amulet and not good people. So they live in a very brutal, uh, intense world in which they're, most of their families, they're in different uh, castes of society, let's say, uh, but their families are being oppressed by this people that are in charge here. Uh, so these kids go to look for this amulet because it's supposed to give them powers, like actual, like, fantastical powers, magical powers, and they want that to help their families. So this is YA and it's it, it reads younger, uh, the younger side of YA, but there's enough stakes and brutal things happening that I wouldn't say it's middle grade, but it's definitely YA, which allows this to be a very fun adventure. And if you're following those characters and just they have a chance to be more lighthearted in their conversations, but we still explore the darker themes of the oppression of the society uh, in the story as well. It was compared to Percy Jackson and Indiana Jones, and I totally see the connection. Percy Jackson just for the group of friends going in these adventures and solving riddles to find things that they're looking for, and Indiana Jones because they're going through ruins and looking for ancient relics. The audiobook was really, really good. I love the narrator and it, I had a really easy time to differentiate the voices and like who was talking at each point. But I will say the story, it does get repetitive a few times just because I think a lot of uh, younger books fall, I wouldn't say fall in the trap because it's just the way that it works for a younger audience, I think. So there was a, a few situations in the book that it kind of was repeated in different scenarios, but it was the same thing happening uh, multiple times, which got repetitive for me a little bit, uh, but not enough to hinder most of my enjoyment for the book. And there was even one point in the story that the kind of the same thing was happening like three or four times and one of the characters was like, oh, not again. And I actually chuckled at that because yeah, I, I felt I felt the same. But overall, it was amazing, a lot of fun. Definitely recommend the audiobook or the actual book. And I will continue the, the, the series. 
And I will also definitely recommend for younger readers. Uh, I don't know what age <laughs> I'm not qualified to decide that, but I think it would be an amazing story for people who like Percy Jackson. And now let's talk about one of my new favorite books and one that I want everyone to read. So please let me convince you, if you haven't already, to read The Will of the Many by James Islington or Islington. I don't know how to say his name. This is the first book in the Hierarchy trilogy, which is a Roman-inspired fantasy series, but it's very fantastical. It's not in our world. It's just like slight... Uh, inspirations but with a lot of Latin involved. And I was so gripped by this book. I think it was so well crafted, so well written, and the way that every the, the pacing was so good, the way that everything was happening in a way and a time that it made sense and it made me want to keep reading and want to know what was going to happen next. It was just amazing. It just immersed me in a story in a way that I hadn't been for a long time. As it happens a lot of times, I think that the synopsis here gives away too much of the book, so I will tell you what I think you should know. And the story we're following this, he's like 17, 18 years old, and he is an orphan. He lives in an orphanage, and he works in the prisons that are in the place where, in the city where he lives. And it's a prison called the Seppers because... And this is all very the beginning of the book. It's not even that important for the rest, but uh, in the Seppers, the prisoner is laid down on a slab of uh, rock. I forgot the type of rock, but a slab of rock or metal or something that takes away their will. Will here is the essence of what gives people will, really, uh, in life and just want to do things and motivation and all of that. So when a person goes to the Seppers, they get their will taken. And the way that this world works is that the people in the higher, the hierarchy, that's why it's called the hierarchy trilogy. So in the hierarchy, the, the ones on the top get will from the ones on the bottom. And the more will you have, the more powerful you are. So you, are, you get actual physical strength. Uh, and a bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to go into it, so you can dis dis discover on your own. You are more important in the society by the amount of will that you have. So it is divided, and in the beginning, before the book starts, there's a, a box <laughs> just explaining. Uh, so it's, it's divided in eight casts, and it's a pyramid because there are more people on the bottom than on the top. And the people on the bottom gives will to the ones uh, right above them, who then gives will to the ones right above them. And they kind of don't have a choice in the matter as soon as they become adults. Uh, so this is right on that edge there. To become an adult and to be forced to give his will to someone else. But he doesn't want to do that because his past is actually hidden from everyone else. Uh, we get glimpses a lot a lot throughout the book, so it's not a big review. We kind of know from the beginning that he's, he's, he comes from a very important family that's been decimated by the people who are now in charge. But there's also a lot of other things going on in this book because a long time ago, there were there was a cataclysm that happened that people don't really know why or how or what happened there or when exactly, but they were left with a bunch of will-powered tools uh, and ways to use will that the way they use today because of what happened, but they don't know how that happened. And we want to know how that happened. <laughs> or at least I do. So there's just a lot of things involved, and more in the character perspective. Uh, like I said, we're following this, and he ha he is visited by this very important man who wants to adopt him so he can help, so this can help him with some investigations that he wants to do, he needs to do four things that he happened happen in his personal life. So there are a lot of characters that are a lot of mystery. There are so many mysteries uh, going on in this book. Um, most of them we do not get an answer for in this book. We only finished the book with more questions, which I loved uh, because we got enough. So we start a book. It, it, there's an academy here that we know this eventually will end up. So we start this book with him in the orphanage and this man uh, wanting to adopt him and all of that. And then we go into the academy. Uh, that takes a long time 
for it to happen. So I've heard some reviews of people saying, oh, I knew about the Academy, I wanted it, I thought it would be sooner. No, it takes a long time. This book is over 600 pages and the author really takes his time. But I think everything that happens before already gripped me so much that as we continued, I was just more engaged in the story. This is all told in first person in the perspective of this. And I think it's a very effective the way that the author hides the things that we shouldn't know yet uh, by telling the story like this. So when they go to the academy, they kind of get shut off from the rest of the world. And we know there's a lot going on. We know there are a lot of political maneuverings happening around, but we don't know what, because we have to focus on this right now. And he already has a lot going on in his personal school life. <laughs> so I think it's very effective the way that the author does that, because then when we eventually see what's happening outside, there already a lot happened, basically. Like there, there was a world happening outside the Academy. I really love the characters. I love uh, both the allies and the antagonists of the story. And I really like how we understand the motivations of... There are two types of antagonists here. Not gonna go too much into it, but we understand their motivations, at least one of them really well, as much as we don't agree with them, because we're in this hat. So we, he doesn't agree, we don't agree, but we kind of get it. Uh, and that's my favorite type of villain, when we understand why they're doing the things they're doing, even if we don't agree, and we think that there should be a better way, but there's just no time to find a better way, or they just are past that. Some of the characters here are really well done, and I would love to have their perspective as well, because it would... I would love to have like a novella side spin-off of this book uh, about a bunch of other characters that appear here. There's quite a few reviews, or not, not exactly plot twists, uh, there are some, but there are a lot of reviews and just... This is discovering a bunch of things in the story and in this world and this island that he is that he doesn't understand and we don't understand and he wants to but there like i said there are other things going on so we finished the story with a lot of answers but also with a lot more questions and i have no idea where we're going from here but this book just gripped me from beginning to end and i can't wait to continue i will probably want to reread it after knowing some of the stuff i kind of want to reread it and i'll probably do that closer to when the sequel comes out and the same way that uh, tyranny of faith did uh, here we also have a lot of conversations about justice and what's fair and what's ethical in the society. And as always, I really love those conversations. That 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 was one of my favorite parts. But this whole book, I think, I think the one thing that might make people not enjoy this book as much as I did is that Viz is really smart and he's really good at everything he does. For a reason, we have a, enough explanation, at least in my opinion, about why he is so good, but I think it was done really well. And just the pacing of the story and the mysteries that we're trying to solve are really good. I think the world and the plot and the structure of the story are the things that worked the most for me. The characters are amazing. There's some of my, ugh, there's some really big sweethearts <laughs> in this book that I would die for. And I want to know more about what's going to happen next. Uh, and there's some, Unfortunate situations that happen, and there's just a lot going on, and there's just a lot about the characters, but because we're in this hat again, we don't... We, we see what he's feeling towards everyone else, but not the other way around, so I don't think the characters will necessarily be what grabs most people in this book, uh, especially if you're more used to character-driven stories, but I think there's still a lot of character, and there's, still, there's a lot of this here. And I just loved it. I loved it so much and I want everyone to read it. I tagged a bunch of stuff. There's so many. Most of these are like actual sentences and discussions that I was really enjoying at the time. Uh, some of them are things that I wanted to remember for later, but most of them are just things that really grabbed me and I loved it. Did I say anything about the magic system? I don't think I did. There's not a lot that I know yet. Uh, because of the relationship that this has with the magic in this world and the will, there's a lot I don't know just because of the way he feels towards it. But he's studying a lot of it in in the academy, and there's not it's it's not an ac academic book in the sense of Babel that we actually get a lot of the lessons. Uh, we skip a bunch of that 
in this book we don't go too much in depth into the the lessons themselves but he is studying a lot of it and it's clearly something that's common and everyone understands in the world but not us and it doesn't it's not really the point for us to understand the magic system at least for now because there's so much more going on uh, in this world that we need to understand uh, first that's going to be more important. I pre-ordered this book just because of the author and before I read it I saw that Patrick Leo had a review about how much he uh, loved this book and adored it so much and it was so one of his favorite books of all time or something. I might be paraphrasing there. Uh, and I didn't watch his whole review at the time because I didn't want to get spoiled for anything, but just his excitement for the book made me want to pick it up. And it definitely worked. It was a great recommendation. And if you haven't checked his channel, do, do that because he has amazing recommendations always. And that was definitely one of them. And it was also very interesting because he really loves the Red Rising trilogy and Red Rising, the first book, was one that I tried to read twice and I couldn't get into it. I still want to try it again. Believe me, I want to torture myself again and try to get through this book. But he really loved that and he said he saw a lot of that type of thing uh, in The Will of the Many. So if you like Red Rising, I for sure would recommend checking his review. But if you don't like Red Rising, I also don't and I still love that. So as much as it has a lot of similar things to Red Rising, I'd still recommend this a lot because I don't I don't know what exactly uh, has that all, Red Rising also has in this book, but this was phenomenal just on its own uh, without that comparison. But if it's something that you like, check his review. But let me know if you've read it and if you're going to read it now, please read it. Please talk to me about it. It's so good, it's so good. And if you don't like it, I guess I respect that. Tell me why. But I hope you will love it. I think this whole wrap up was longer than the ones that I do with like eight books, but I was I, I had a lot of things to say about all those four books. So there there we are. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye.